think we can kick this off. Let's do this. So fourth community call, bunch of stuff to cover. Um, so we've had had somewhat of a uh, of a uh, of a launch update for the for the community today, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> Dean. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we should we should definitely dive into that. I yeah, I think people are going to want to hear what this is and you know catch up to speed on it. So I'll, I'll let you take it away. Good. So um, yeah, this is this is you know normal engineering activity, but we're we're as we're closer to launch. Now it's 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 a lot about precisely what are we launching so that the community can pick it up and start to to get these releases. So we have a you know phased launch approach. The MVP, the minimum you know minimum viable product is the phrase, but it's really what is the minimum we can do to get IST into the interchain so users can bring it across to you know their favorite smart contracts to you know zones like Osmosis and Crescent and Juno and Evmos and and all the other myriad. Um, uh, uh, chains across, uh, you know, connected by IBC. Um, and so the the first phase of this is what's, is, um, uh, well, actually, I'll let Roland leap in here if he's here. He's got nice phrasing for this, so go for it. Sure, yeah, thanks, thanks Dean. Um, yeah, so the, the the first phase of of the launch is really what, you know, for people that have been following into protocol, it's the contract known as the parity stability module. And that contract accepts um, an external stable coin and in exchange mints IST or vice versa, it will accept IST and burn it and give back uh, the external stable coin. Um, and so, you know, that's that's the module that we largely use uh, in, the, in the full design to keep the, the tight peg of IST towards the dollar, um, but it also serves as an effective minting tool. And so the, the first phase of this really is the launch of the parity stability module contract, um, which will allow multiple, you know, and it, it can be instantiated multiple times, which means that multiple different stable coins could be allowed uh, with different uh, bridges and different debt limits or mint limits set. Um, and really the implication of that is that IST launches as sort of a, a stable coin, external stable coin backed um, uh, stable token. And, you know, that it, it sort of allows the risk to be weighted by the econ committee using uh, things like the mint limits um, to, to manage bridge risk, manage uh, uh, the actual asset risk and all of that. Great. It'll be and it'll be really useful, I think, to to as we get multiple of these different bridged uh, staple tokens from other from other chains or from outside the interchain, uh, being able to consolidate them into one fungible thing that's designed not only to incorporate them, but over time incorporate, of course, all the other mechanisms that are that that, that have been developed for IST. Um, it's a really nice place to start. A really you know a really clean, stable place to start, and and um, uh, and focuses on getting IST out onto the interchain. So, so we're excited about that. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, to that end, really, the, really, the focus of this launch will be activities on those external chains. So, you know, Dean mentioned a few. You know, obviously, we're sort of targeting any interesting Cosmos DeFi, um, and we want to make sure that IST is is trading there. You know, it has deep liquidity pools where necessary. And so, the you know, the focus of this launch really will be getting that rolling. And, and sort of as Dean has sort of said before, it's sort of inter first. You know, we want to make sure that we are across the interchain, and there's you know people that are trading on Osmosis or Crescent or Juno who may not be as familiar with Agoric or may not have known about Interprotocol before uh, will we'll see it as a, as a key asset there and be able to start trading it. And, you know, those of us that are here will sort of know that it's not the full IST, uh, but it will grow into that over the, the course of the, the next quarter. Um, so that really is is the hope for this this initial launch. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and then the following releases. So, so these are all, you know. Oh, actually, before I go there, let's talk a little bit about schedule for that. Uh, for for the the first, uh, the the first MVP launch here. Yeah. Um, so, so the goal really is um, to have the software be released for testing and consideration by the community. Uh, very shortly. Uh, so internally, we got we, and I don't know if I should share this. Internally, we've got a a, a target for effectively tomorrow to have uh, a release candidate ready. Oh, uh, and 
<laughs> that, is, that is internal. Uh, that is internal. Uh, but but then really, really, the goal is to sort of target a, a, a chain vote for an upgrade in October. And, and the delta there between now and October really is testing um, security, making sure that we're confident in, in what we've built and that um, in the performance. So that that sort of is, is the target right now. So looking for a chain vote for launch in October. Hmm. Well, for the chain vote to conclude then. We'll see when we start it, but yes. Good. And then after that, there are the additional pieces, which have been in testnet for a while, but continue to uh, uh, um, get feedback and then get hardened through um, uh, testing and security audits of um, the reserve uh, plus AMM, uh, the native AMM on the Agoric chain, um, then vaults and oracles and liquidation. So that's the, that's, that is the mechanism that enables Atom and other tokens to be to come across um, as collateral for minting IST against, and then finally uh, uh, build boost um, after the the others are deployed and and you know stabilized and all that sort of stuff to enable uh, minting IST against locked up build against the 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 rewards from the locked up build, and so these will be you know those are the expected stages. Additionally, other people in the community. Um, some of them have proposed other mechanisms or other additions. Um, and so, uh, you know, additional pieces might come out of the community following the, the, the launch of some of these other key pieces. So, so um, looking forward to, to how this grows. Okay, let's, um, anything else you want to add on this, Roland? Yeah, actually, just really quickly, uh, I, I want to quick, give a quick sense of what the user experience there will be. Um, the, the PSM will have a, a front end to it, so users will be able to come and, and use the UI to, to trade. Um, and a, a core part of this will be making sure that it's it's straightforward to get the right bridged assets over to the Agoric chain, right? So, um, you know, if, you know, the, the key bridges we're, we're looking at are likely Axelar and Gravity Bridge. It will be up to governance and the econ committee um, to, to determine which assets actually get launched. Um, but we're sort of assuming that those bridges will be will be in play and, um, you know, targeting ha being, being live in the UIs for those bridges. So really should be able to pretty straightforwardly bring the assets you want to the Agoric chain, mint IST, and then get to your your decks where you can provide liquidity for, for others who will be trading with it and, and may not even know about it, but will be learning about it because of your actions. So that's that's really the goal. And so now let's talk a little bit about the, the econ committee, or actually I'm, I'm going to hand it off here shortly to Jason. I wanted to say something about it, though. You know, our focus, Agoric Opco's focus, is in building software, building systems, engineering systems. And it's, of course, the, the you know, the validators, the community, um, and the extended interchain folks that, that launch and consume and grow and guide and that sort of thing. Um, for the econ committee, you know, we, we talked about this econ committee, which is, you know, as with many of the governance things in the crypto ecosystem, um, it's partly an experiment, but it's an experiment that follows how other systems have successfully been guided, where there is a vote of a broad community that uh, that, that elects and or approves a team of subject matter experts that can work together to cover the expertise required to make rapid decisions or make uh, decisions that have that involve you know deep expertise like exactly what are the risk trade-offs and so this is what the design for IST has been is that there would be a, a committee of experts to do this sort of thing and I claim to not be one of those and so now I'm going to shut up and hand it off to Jason Potts Professor Jason Potts from RMIT University blockchain innovation hub and a wide variety of other um, economic relevant expertises so, Jason, tell us about the econ, econ committee. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. Um, so, yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jason Potts. So, I'm um, professor of economics at RMIT University in Australia and um, co founder of one of the first social science research institutes into blockchain. And we've been, we've been deeply involved um, in Agoric for, you know, forever, um, in a sense. What we've done is so, so, I'm the chair of the economic committee, and um, we've, we've assembled a team of um, a ticket that we were proposing um, to, to put to a community vote um, of a six other subject matter experts drawn from around the world across a, a variety of domains um, 
heavily weighted towards economic analysis, but also law, policy, um, risk analysis, technical, um, particularly sort of um, with a focus on, on, on Cosmos technical skills to put together what we what we think we need to do to effectively launch just the best stable money that we can build in the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, so as, as as Dean was saying, that the approach here is, you know, IST is a protocol. Um, we we aim toward de, you know um, progressive decentralization in this process, but we need to be able to move quickly and fast. Um, initially, we need to have a domain of experts that we can that 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 can provide um, all of the best analysis around the technical risks, the sort of bridge risks in particular, um, a lot of the. Um, considerations around assessing high quality collateral and, and, and being able to sort of put that together so that we can build ourselves um, this, the, you know, what we're intending to do, which is just the, the best quality stable coin that we can possibly make here. Um, so the, the committee we've got, um, or the, the, the ticket that we're proposing is myself, um, Chris Berg, who's also with, with Blockchain Innovation Hub, um, jo- Joseph Clark, who's a um, one of the world's leading experts in, in, um, in options design and, 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 and risk analysis, long history of, 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 um, in, of, of work in, in and understanding the sort of risk involved in that. Um, we've got um, Yosef Amrani, who's, who's a sort of technical expert in the, in the Cosmos domain. We've got Chloe White, um, who's one of the world's leading experts in um, understanding political risk um, and regulatory risks associated with the entire crypto, crypto space, and Thibaut Schreppel, who is one of the world's leading academic crypto lawyers um, and done a lot of work on competition policy, antitrust policy in the space. So that, that, sort of, that subject matter um, team, um, but five of those are economists in, in the group. Um, is, is, is the, we've, we've spent quite a bit of time sort of searching to find what we think is actually the, the, the strongest um, group that we can put together to work on that, so that's what we're proposing as our as our economic committee. Um, there's a they're a high functioning team that sort of knows each other quite well, so we can work very effectively together um, to assess all of the dimensions of risk that we, we expect to to, be, to need to be able to manage um, on a timely basis. So that's the that's the team that we've put together for this, and you know, we're really excited about what we can what we can build with this. Dean, hand you back to you. <laughs> Excellent. And, you know, from my perspective, you know, the, the uh, one of the early things that you will all, that you guys will also figure out is how that team evolves over time. You know, our, I'm excited that the initial, you know, econ committee is a team that has the relevant expertises, obviously, as it lo- as 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 the the ISD ecosystem grows and expands and evolves and so forth. Um, uh, you know, you guys will de- need to define the process by which that uh, that that team grows and evolves and so forth. So so there should be plenty of ways for the rest of the extended ecosystem to participate and contribute and, and communicate with that that team and and um, uh, provide their expertise and get get on board it as required. Um, uh, but but I'm really excited to have such a quality team to to, to start with and kick things off. Um, now there may be other people that 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 that, that have that have uh, questions for you here, um, and and or other information on the community. So let's bring uh, Zucky up, um, who is we have not only econ committee, but we also have lots of advisors from the rest of the world here. So so come on up, Zucky, and, and uh, uh, let it, tell us about uh, what else is going on in this space. <laughs> well, I think there's a couple of things. Like one is, I think. Uh, you know, context, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the vision of, uh, of IST is primarily to be an asset that is uh, deeply sort of interoperable with Cosmos DeFi. So, right, like it, it will be backed by Cosmos assets. It will have util IST will have uh, utility in Cosmos DeFi and it will, you know, you know, the possibility of deeper integrations, like, you know, Delta neutral stable, like Delta neutral backing and stuff like that are all, you know, part of the vision, at least that I have for IST. But the attractive thing about launching with the parity stability module is uh, like sort of like taking on incremental complexity, right? There's a huge amount of engineering complexity that is being uh, sort of 
delivered to end users, which is, you know, the entire Agoric smart contract runtime, all of its integrations with the Cosmos stack and the integration with IBC, um, the integration, you know, the uh, uh, governance mechanism, the uh, the economic committee mechanism and all of that stuff, you know, is is, um, you know, with some, we also decided to like sort of launch this like stablecoin uh, seller first. Um, and in this in the same way with with the PSM, we're, we're starting with sort of the the um, least financially complex system so that we can like uh, uh, so that we can all take the minimum amount of risk with the, all the technical pieces coming together. Um, and then we can progressively increase complexity by adding, you know, vaults and li the liquidation mechanism and the AMM and all of these pieces. Um, and, you know, this will be hopefully the pattern that we use um, going forward with the, with the evolution of IST, where we are going to be adding more and more complex things um, and we can start them out with like low debt limits and then we can progressively take on more risk uh, as we have as we build confidence in the system. Um, so I'm very excited about this launch strategy. I think it's very timely. Um, I think it will is uh, well positioned to uh, make IST uh, quickly an asset that the entire Cosmos ecosystem can rally around. I'm excited about that. Thank you. Yes, that's the good, good reference points. And, uh, and with uh, Jason talking about you're talking about all the, the committee coming in, also having them, you know, have fairly clear, you know, um, uh, 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 input on how quickly they can absorb uh, new mechanisms to manage the, 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 you know, to, to manage, to ensure the continuing um, uh, robustness of the token is going to be critical, of course. So, so input from from both the econ committee and the rest of the community for for the technical deployment is going to be really, really, really valuable. So, excellent. Well, uh, um, I think that's up. That's that's uh, it on the 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 technical side and the the governance side. Unless there are questions. Santi, you should come back. Up. Yeah. Well, I think I think if people have yeah definitely if you have questions, they'll request to speak. We we have. We have a few people here who uh, probably tackle most stuff. Um, yeah, in the meantime, you know, I, I think, you know, we covered a lot of the, the digital world here. And I think, you know, to bring it to the physical world quickly, um, you know, we're, we're planning a, a, I brought this up before, but we have an inner protocol, uh, bit of a party going on at, at Misari. Um, and we'll have, <laughs> we'll have a, a page up uh, probably by the end of this week. Um, so if anyone's around, definitely recommend you know keeping a keeping an eye on the, on the socials. Um, I think it's gonna be a very fun event um, and a great opportunity to meet and chat about Inter Protocol and IST. So uh, looks like we have someone. Hey, C is in. I guess that's Citizen actually, isn't it? I think you can. Uh, you should be able to speak now. Hey guys, um, a question for Dean or Zaki, whoever uh, has an answer. Uh, I've been drinking too much uh, cosmic uh, uh, Kool-Aid to be objective, uh, uh, so I'm too optimistic, right? Um, but Luna happened, right? And UST happened. So how to the newbies uh, that I'm trying to bring in or that you guys are trying to bring on board to Agoric, uh, BLD, and uh, IST, um, like, in one sentence, if you can, maximum three sentence, like what makes you different than EST? So I'm, I'm he, he called Dean out, but I'm happy to take it on. You know, I, I think in one word, it's over collateralization. That might be too technical a word for, for people that are just coming into the system. But fundamentally, the mechanism, the mechanism for how a, an asset stays stable is, is important. It is the driver of whether it succeeds or fails at staying stable. Uh, and IST has a fundamentally different mechanism design than UST did. Um, so I would argue that you know, a, a, a more relevant comparison would be MakerDAO or other similar over collateralized stable coins, which have fared very well in, in across crypto collapses. Okay. Um, um, so over collateralization, I don't think is a too technical term for most people, uh, adults at least. Um, so when 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 you say over collateralization, people understand that it's essentially uh, distributed uh, uh, risk, right? 
Um, so can you explain how IST does it? Like, again, in the most concise way possible? I'm not sure if I follow the distributed risk connection. Maybe I'll, I'll get it in a second. But um, the way I see it is the, the, at the protocol holds more in assets than the IST that has been minted. And as the market, as markets decline, as the value of those assets decline, uh, it has a way to automatically shrink the IST supply. And so the way it does that is through liquidations. And um, so, you know, uh, obviously different, different protocols have different models for liquidations and those models matter. Um, so, you know, as, as you get deeper into this, that the analysis of that is important, but that's sort of the short answer is as, you know, if, if a lot of IST is backed by Atom and the Atom price declines, then uh, the inter-protocol automatically liquidates that Atom and, and goes to burn the debt and uh, reduce IST supply. And so the consequence is that there's always more value in the, in the collateral in the system than there is IST minted. And yes. that's the that's the that's the goal you always want to keep. And it's not about whether the the collateral is volatile. It's about whether the collateral can be sold efficiently um, in order to if a liquidation has to happen, it can be sold off to cover the debt that the, 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 the collateral was for. And so that's an example of why Adam is great collateral is it it's available. It, it's it's. Uh, it, it can be sold in many markets. There's a lot of interested parties. Um, it's, it's basically easily liquid. That's one of the key uh, features you want for a collateral. And so it's, 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 it's in a good position to that. There are a few others that are, that are, that are, that are similar, but, you know, uh, I, I, I use that as the, the core example because, you know, it provides the backbone for the interchain here. So is there, is there a, a simple sheet or chart or diagram or something visually or in a simple written few sentences? However you do it, I mean, it's got to get simpler because I, I've been in, in, in crypto for six years. And the way the, I, I think a lot of the uh, cryptographers, especially the, the developers, engineers, software engineers, you guys have been doing this thing for so long you guys are talking amongst yourselves and I've been in this for six years. And so I'm, I could understand what you're saying, but it's not conducive to, for uh, a, a broader audience and broader adoption, which is what we're looking for. And so what, what I'm looking for to help them is a simple information where I could retrieve it. Cause I don't currently even understand how I, I actually so, work. So go to inter.trade. There's definitely, you know, relatively simple white paper, but probably still not quite what you're looking for. But, I, you know, what you say is absolutely true. People need the IL5 uh, description of these things. Um, and the community has provided several good uh, video reviews and discussions um, on this and, you know, and, and tweet threads about how it works and that sort of thing. But it's definitely the kind of thing where we need to gather all those resources and then gradually get the, the explainers that make it clear. Um, so please take a look, uh, provide feedback on those channels, and, and that'll go into helping uh, shape the next round of, of, of presentation and documentation on that. Yeah, and I, I guess just to add there, like I 100% I agree, and I think that you know for a long time we've been arguing as as analogy to existing systems. You know, it actually took me coming to one of the Cosmos conferences. Uh, it was Gateway, I believe, right after the Terra collapse, and I hadn't hadn't realized how many people had come into the the um, into this ecosystem through Terra and really only knew Terra as, as a design and weren't familiar with these other things that we were trying to argue by analogy to. Um, and so it is clear that we need explanations from first principles um, with, with you know, basically pretty graphics. And I think that's something that's easily doable um, and, you know, we should target having that. Um, and I, I know Santi's listening, so uh, we will do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm absorbing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll right. just make this the last comment or question. Uh, like, so I, uh, when I was talking to uh, Chad Bareford at uh, ThorChain, so he's been working on this thing called ThorFi, right, which was a lending protocol and all that stuff, be right before the Luna crash happened. And that so the ThorChain community, which is Cosmos, obviously, uh, hasn't been comfortable and they haven't been warming up to any kind of... Stablecoin, any kind of leverage trading, any kind of uh, Thorify 
all the stuff that uh, Chad's been working on for years. And and it was so they were they were going to launch it, but they backed up because they were against it. So I, I'm just saying all this because I think the, um, the we're still only four months removed from the biggest uh, a trauma that that happened in recent memory uh, to crypto uh, in cryptoverse. And I think having something that makes people easily understandable and comfortable, and so that they could buy into it without having to go to a second party to ask them, hey, what is hey what guys, is this saying? I, I think they need to understand it for themselves. And I think that communication, I think, must happen. I'll, I'll, I'll just stop there. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Well, thank, well, thank you, you Susan. Yes. Thank you. I think we have one other, a few other questions here. Yes. Yeah, if we can make oh, this a hyper sure, quick, quick one, Joseph. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> just a quick question. Uh, that was really interesting what you were saying about um, Adam being sold automatically if the price of Adam uh, starts to decline. And we're, we're hearing about all these uh, new stable coins coming up like USK and IST. They're going to be backed by Adam. And if, if all of this is uh, automatically sold, if Adam price declines, this could be this could be um, a big hit uh, for Adam price at the same time. Right. So we're excited about this, that Adam is, is backing all these. But if there is selling pressure, there could be an increase in selling pressure. Is that correct? So, OK, there's like a there's like a subtlety to this that is 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 frequently lost. So the um, the in when Adam is being sold by the IST uh, stability mechanism, it's being sold at a discount to what the trading price of Adam is. So you think if you know if Adam is selling at if you know Adam price has gone down, it's selling at uh, a dollar. You should be able to buy Adams from the IST protocol for $9 because of liquidations, right? So like there's some discount price, right? Which the system is sort of dynamically optimizing uh, 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 under these conditions. So it does, it's not so much the question of, oh, this is putting on, uh, putting on this incredible amount of selling pressure, which will further drive the price down. What it's doing is, is, is it's incentivizing people to remove IST from the ecosystem i.e. to take IST that was collateralized by Adam and take it uh, uh, and essentially burn it, like take it out of the ecosystem. And so rather, and like we've seen this, you know, and, you know, there are countervailing incentives, right? So on one hand, people are going to be, uh, uh, are going to be uh, like the protocol will be liquidating atoms that are, on the other hand, people who have IST vaults that are backed by atoms will be pouring more atoms into their vaults to, to, uh, to protect against li liquidation. And so there's these complex, so like the game theory of this is not, you know, uh, uh, as simple and as linear as, okay, like pr price goes down, atom gets cold, price goes up, atoms get added, um, or like IST gets minted. It's a, it's, it's a, it is a bit of a more of a complex game in which there are multiple parties, each who are trying to like sort of maximize their outcomes. Um, and some of those parties are going to be uh, incentivized to put more atoms into the system. Some of those parties are going to be incentivized to put stable coins into the parity stability module to get IST to buy those discounted atoms. Um, and some of those parties are going to be selling atoms. Um, so, you know, the the uh the complex interplay of those things combined with like everything that else is going on in the atom economy uh results in the stability mechanism and results in the amount we can safely grow, grow the stable coin. great thank you hopefully joseph that that answered your question thank you zagi all right we have another uh we have another request here one second hey how's it going abby check yeah hi uh so uh, just had uh, like I went through the mechanism and uh, you know full disclosure we are also uh, I'm the founder of Comdex so creating something very similar. The only uh, you know question and the difference that I see is uh, using uh, SDK BLD as one of the collaterals. So uh, you know we've uh, seen that in Maker and in uh, discussion around uh, you know using Maker as collateral, but that never gets utilized because it can have cascading liquidations. Uh, you know, if, if that is used as collateral. 
but in IST, uh, in the white paper, and I'm not sure if you know, you've changed the mechanism, but uh, uh, five is like BLDs, uh, you know, an acceptable collateral, and uh, you know, how, how does it affect the uh, stability, uh, uh, you know, of IST itself? I think there was this question about build, like the build boost system, and whether or not build is, operates as collateral um, within the IST mechanism. Um, and so I think it's important to understand that build boost is a completely independent mechanism of vaults. Um, so vaults are the, are the over collateralized mechanism, um, that like undergoes liquidations and all of these things. Um, so one of the ways to understand what the build boost mechanism is doing is the build boost mechanism is, so you expect that as people are using IST, creating IST, uh, uh, using the parity stability module, et cetera, there is going to be a flow of IST uh, to all uh, future, uh, um, uh, uh, to like staked build, right? So there's going to be this, there's like this expected flow of IST um, in terms of staking rewards to stake build. Um, what you are essentially doing is you're collateralizing a very small IST position with uh, uh, with that, with the, in, like the, what you, the expected IST flow from the, um, from staking your build. Right. Um, and so like what you're basically doing is saying, I have staked build, the staked build is going to generate future flows of IST. I can collateralize my, uh, uh, IST position. This is a, also just like a relatively small mechanism in terms of like you, you, you know, the, the fraction of the value of build that you expect and the fraction of of like the IST economy that you have access to is like is likely to be like maybe like, you know, one to two percent of the IST supply and like one to two percent of the build market cap. Um, these are relatively small values that are there. And yes, you cannot look. There is no liquidation mechanism in the build boost mechanism. So we're not selling builds to maintain um uh, the solvency of the system. Uh, it's just as long as IST is, you know, continues to operate, um, you expect that there will be this flow of IST um, that will be balanced, that will be ensuring that the that the system remains balanced. Uh, th thanks for the answer. Uh, you know, the IST flows. Uh, you know, that that definitely makes sense. But w why no liquidations for BLD? Assuming everything. Uh, is via the BSM, and let's say one dollar is melted out of BLD. Uh, and if BLD prices goes down, wouldn't IST be slightly a little bit under collateralized in that case? Well, because like a significant fraction of the value of build, right, is going to be, is, you know, there's like some speculation premium on the value of build, but like also there's the like expected future value of the IST system. Uh, especially until the rest of um, the sort of agoric system uh, uh, is like fully launched and permissionless. Um, so, you know, like, you know, it, it, it will be advised by the economic stability committee and the, um, um, the, and the, um, and the, and a choice of build holders when, you know, when and if there might be some world in which build can participate in the vault mechanism. But like it's like my the like the point I was trying to say is this build boost mechanism the like boost mechanism in general um, is a is a very separate mechanism from the vault mechanism um, uh, in terms of uh, of how it produces IST and 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 mint and so you kind of like this is sort of the pattern right it's like there are going to be there are like. There are many ways of making there are there are we've already proposed that there be three ways of creating IST. There are going to be more. Um, there are going to be more things in the future than vaults, the parity stability module, and the boost mechanism. Like there's so many different things that we could plausibly construct from the entire universe of Agoric and uh, uh, the wider IBC ecosystem to like to to collateralize stable coins but each one of them needs their own independent reasoning about why it maintains stability um that can inform like you know how much ist that mechanism is allowed should be allowed to produce without threatening the entire system 
And so that all of these mechanisms can be safely composed together without like introducing couplings like economic or software couplings that can like threaten the stability of the whole system. Uh, thanks a lot, Saki, for answering the question. I think, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, as, as the protocol evolves, uh, you know, there'll be, uh, it's ideal to have multiple ways of uh, creating ISD. Thank, uh, thank you so much. Cool. I don't think we have uh, any other requests yet. Anyone else have any comments before we close this? Well, I'm I, I am so happy that thank you, uh, Zaki and Jason, for uh, not just joining us here, but 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 your contributions uh, um, uh, in the in the community outside uh, for for Inter. So so uh, it's so great to have uh, 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 expertise helping us. So or help, help, helping this get out to market. So thanks. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll, we'll close this now. Have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.